In landscapes, especially those with a lot of flowers, the area is buzzing with activity. Homeowners and business owners want pests controlled, but you also have to take into consideration about how to protect the pollinators. Choose insecticides that are highly selective to a specific type of insect and so have low toxicity for others. An EPA reduced risk product is a conventional pesticide that poses less risk to human health in the environment than existing conventional alternatives. Other characteristics of low impact pesticides are those that break down rapidly after application and therefore have minimal impact on pollinators and natural enemies. However, using these products requires some knowledge about their relative toxicity to beneficial insects and their potential to cause biotoxicity. I'm Dr. DeBusk and this video goes over the types of products that have a minimal impact on beneficial insects such as pollinators while still being able to control ornamental pests. Insecticidal soaps are applied as a foliar application and are effective on a wide range of plant pests when the soap spray comes into contact with the pest. Most commercially available insecticidal soaps are made of potassium salts of fatty acids and kill by disrupting the structure and permeability of insect cell membranes. Insecticidal soaps are most effective on soft-bodied arthropods such as aphids, lace bugs, leafhoppers, mealybugs, thrips, spider mites, and whiteflies. They are not effective on pests as a residue on the plant surface and therefore are not toxic to pollinators after the spray dries. They can be safely used at any time to control pests on plants that are not attractive to pollinators, but on pollinator at attractive plants, spray at dawn or dusk when pollinators are not present. Be aware that some landscape plants are known to be sensitive to insecticidal soap. Always use a commercial brand as some homemade concoctions using dishwashing detergents and other household cleaners may be more toxic to plants. Horticultural oil is a term for the various oils used for pest control on plants. Most horticultural oils are lightweight and petroleum based, but some are made from grains, vegetables, or neem tree seeds. Like insecticidal soap, horticultural oils work best when the spray comes in contact with the pest. Once the oil spray dries, it does not have much effect and becomes safe for pollinators and other beneficial insects. Horticultural oil can be safely used at any time to control pests on plants that are not attractive to pollinators, but on pollinator attractive plants they should be sprayed at dawn or dusk when pollinators are not present. Horticultural oils give excellent control of armored scales and can also be used for aphids, whiteflies, spider mites, true bugs, caterpillar, and sawfly larvae and more. The recommended concentration of horticultural oils for pest control is usually 2%. However, even at 2%, some plants are sensitive to oils. Another precaution is that applying oils during high humidity or high temperatures may cause phytotoxicity. Plant injury symptoms following an application of horticultural oil are discoloration, yellowing, necrosis, black spots, and terminal or branch dieback. Many horticultural oil products have been approved and listed by the Organic Materials Review Institute, OMRI, for organic use. Products containing Bt are made from a naturally occurring soil bacterium. Many different Bt products are available for landscape professionals and homeowners. Different strains of Bt target specific pest groups, making them selective pesticides. For example, spores and crystals of Bacillus thuringiensis variety Kirstaki, BTK, are highly toxic when ingested by butterfly and moth larvae. The crystals containing the toxin dissolve only on an extremely high pH found in the caterpillar's gut. BTK is not toxic to bees. However, avoid spraying or allowing spray to drift onto favored food plants of caterpillars such as milkweed, the primary food source for monarch butterfly caterpillars. Another strain of Bt, Bt galleriae, Btg, targets several species of beetles in the adult and larval stages, including scarab beetles, weevils, and leaf beetles. Btg is not toxic to bees or butterflies, but applications should be avoided where predatory beetles are active. While a Bt strain works well for its target pests, it also breaks down quickly in sunlight, becoming ineffective after a few days. This makes Bt very safe for pollinators, predatory insects, and mammals. Bt can be sprayed even when bees or butterflies are present. Many Bt products are OMRI listed. Chromobacterium subsugae is a naturally occurring bacterium that is used in a fermentation process that produces a product with insecticidal properties. It is a broad-spectrum bioinsecticide miticide that 
controls and suppresses insect and mite pests on ornamentals and turf. It has multiple modes of action, including oral toxicity, repellency, and reduced reproduction. This product is applied as a foliar application and targets numerous caterpillar species in addition to aphids, whiteflies, thrips, psyllids, chinch bugs, mites, and certain beetles. It suppresses a broad number of caterpillar species and should not be sprayed or allowed to drift in known habitats for threatened or endangered species of caterpillars and butterflies. This product may repel beads for up to six days, so time applications to avoid disrupting pollination. Grandivo PTO is an OMRI listed product. Spinosad is derived from a soil bacterium and affects the nervous system of insects and mites. It has contact activity, but is even more active when ingested. Several products containing spinosad are labeled for ornamental and agricultural uses to control a broad spectrum of pests, including caterpillars, sawfly larvae, leaf beetle adults and larvae, thrips, leaf miners, and gall-making flies. Spinosad is highly toxic to bees. However, toxicity is greatly reduced once the product has dried on the foliage, within three hours to one day depending on the product. Therefore, avoid use when bees are active and if applications are needed, apply in the evening when bees are not active and product has time to dry. This product suppresses a broad number of caterpillar species and should not be sprayed or allowed to drift in known habitats for threatened or endangered species of caterpillars and butterflies. Some spinosad products are OMRI listed and on the EPA reduced risk list. As a directin is the active ingredient extracted from seeds of the tropical neem tree. Bioinsecticides with as a directin act as an insect growth regulator in addition to being an antifeedant and repellent to insects. It is effective at controlling insect immature stages and is broadly labeled for aphids and caterpillars such as budworms, tent caterpillars and webworms, beetles such as Japanese beetles, weevils, leafhoppers, leaf miners, mealybugs, psyllids, sawflies, scales, thrips, and whiteflies. As a directin, must be ingested to be toxic and when applied as a foliar spray has short residual activity, making it unlikely bees and other pollinators will be affected as it's no longer toxic for bees after about two hours. Direct contact has shown no effect on worker honeybees. As a direct in products can be safely used at any time to control pests on plants that are not attractive to pollinators. However, on pollinator attractive plants they should be sprayed during the late during late evening, night, or early morning when pollinators are not present to minimize contact with adult bees that could potentially bring as a directin back to the nest where larvae are present. Many as a directin products are OMRI listed. Chlorentranilipril interrupts the mu normal muscle contraction of insects, resulting in paralysis and death. It has limited systemic activity and can be applied as a foliar spray or through the soil. It is labeled against ornamental pests, primarily grubs. Chlorentranilipril has ne negligible toxicity to bees and is shown to have no impact on bumblebees. It has no direct Im impact on natural enemies and so is compatible with IPM programs. This neonicotinoid is classified as reduced risk by EPA. It kills insects by disrupting the nerve function. Acetamiprid is systemic and absorbed through the foliage or when applied as a basal bark spray. It is labeled to control a broad range of pest insects on ornamental plants including aphids, caterpillars, mealybugs, leafhoppers armored in soft scales, plant bugs, whiteflies, fungus gnat larvae, thrips, and leaf mining flies. Because acetamiprid is toxic to multiple caterpillar species, this product should not be sprayed or allowed to drift into known habitats for threatened or endangered species of caterpillars and butterflies. Although acetaminophen is less toxic to bees than other neonicotinoids, it is still toxic to bees directly exposed to the chemical. Apply acetaminophen in the evening, night, or early morning when bees are not visiting blooming plants and the residue will not be harmful to bees. When the fungicide fimbuconazole is Combined with acetaminophen, the mixture is about five-fold more toxic to honeybees than acetaminophen alone. This reduced risk pesticide disrupts the normal feeding behavior of aphids and whiteflies on ornamentals. The Endeavor label states no precautions for honeybees and bumblebees. However, some toxicity has been observed in field studies. 
As a caution, apply pimetrazine in the evening, night, or early morning when bees are not visiting blooming plants. Since this product is selected for aphids and whiteflies, there should be no impact on other pollinators or natural enemies. This EPA reduced risk chemical is an IGR that disrupts the molting of early instar caterpillars following ingestion. Tebufinazide is a selective chemical selective specific to caterpillars. It is labeled for use on ornamentals for a broad range of caterpillars. Timbufinazide is selective, making the product non-toxic to bees and most natural enemies. However, caution should be used to avoid application or drift to larval food plants of butterfly and moth pollinators. Pyroproxifen is an EPA-reduced risk chemical that acts as an IGR disrupting the molting process of immature insects. It has translaminar activity and ovocidal activities. Pyroproxifen provides very good control of certain scale insects. It also controls whiteflies and suppresses aphids and mealybugs. Pyroproxifen has low to moderate toxicity to bees. Be careful to avoid spraying or drift near honeybee hives and bumblebee nests. There should be little impact on butterflies or other beneficial insects. Phytotoxicity has been observed on the following plants. Salvia, Boston fern, Scheffelera, Gardenia, and Coral Bells. Buprofazin is an IGR effective against nymphal stages of soft and armored scales, whiteflies, psyllids, mealybugs, plant hoppers, and leaf hoppers. It works by inhibiting chitin synthesis, suppressing oviposition of adults, and reducing egg viability. It is non-toxic to bees and is not disruptive to other beneficial insects and mites. Spiromesophen is a mite IGR labeled as an EPA reduced risk chemical. It is a lipids biosynthesis inhibitor and targets all stages of the broad range of mite species and immature stages of whitefly species. The forbid label states no precautions for bees, but there are concerns about the systemic nature of this product and the potential exposure of bee larvae to this class of insecticide. Due to this concern, spiromesophen should be applied after bloom for flowering plants attractive to bees. This EPA reduced risk miticide is a metabolic poison that kills spider mites by affecting energy production. It provides quick knockdown and long residual control. Plants should be tested for sensitivity to aciquinacil, especially roses and impatiens. The shuttle label states no precautions for bees. Aciquinacil is considered non-toxic to bees and can be applied at any time. Since aciquinacil is selected for mites, other pollinators and natural enemies should not be affected. This mite growth regulator disrupts mites normal development. It is effective against immature spider mites and eggs, has long residual activity and is applied at low rates. Hexagon is selective for spider mites. There is no bee precautionary statement on the hexagon label and it is generally considered non-toxic to bees. Although there is a caution, there may be a short residual effect on alfalfa leaf cutting bees. As a caution, apply hexithiazox in the evening, night, or early morning when bees are not visiting blooming plants. Since hexithiazox is selective for mites, other pollinators and natural enemies should not be affected. Etoxazole is a selective miticide effective against most plant feeding mites, but fairly safe for most predatory insects and mites. Atoxazole is practically non-toxic to adult honeybees. In this video, I hope you learned that for the professional, there are a lot more products that you can choose that have low toxicity to pollinators than just soaps, oils, and neem oil. By carefully selecting a pesticide and applying it properly, you can control the pests and protect pollinators.